The price of a piglet is 10 coins, but the price of the girl is 4 coins. The father sells the girl to a stranger for 4 coins. Because the girl has a very special look, she is also deformed and hunchback. She even can't do the simplest housework, and she is disliked by her family. The girl was put in a cell by strangers. She keeps banging on the door, not understanding why her family has abandoned her. Soon the girl is exhausted. She sees a mirror in the cell. That is the first time she could see her face. The girl finally understands the reason for her abandonment. She feels very desperate and breaks the mirror. The girl picks up the shards of glass and tries to end her life, but she is saved. A woman stands over her. She claimed to be the dean of the magic academy. She wants the girl not to give up on herself and to follow her to learn sorcery. Because the dean knows that the girl is no ordinary person. The girl's name was Yennefer and she has a quarter of elven blood. There is a powerful force sealed in her body. The dean wanted to train her to become the strongest sorcerer on the continent. Yennefer feels valued for the first time and she begins to learn sorcery. In the first lesson, she and her classmates need to try to control the levitation of a stone. Soon one of the students succeeds, but an accident happens. Her palm is eroded by the sorcery and grows black. She is in great pain and screams loudly. The dean tells the class that there is a price to pay for using spells. She gives the class a demonstration. As the stone levitates, the flower in her hand wilts. After the students mastered the method, they keep practicing. Many of the students succeeded. Only Yennefer did make any progress. The stone on her table didn't move at all. The dean is a little disappointed, and she is hard to believe that Yennefer is the one she has chosen. But time passed and soon the second class began. The students need to learn about telepathy, using sorcery to gain insight into the weaknesses of others. This is also difficult for Yennefer. With wide eyes, she keeps staring at her classmates. But after a long time, she still hadn't he succeeded. She can only lie to the dean that her classmate's most feared animal is a snake. But Yennefer's lie was quickly dismantled by her classmate. The classmate also pointed out that Yennefer's greatest fear was her own face. The dean scolds Yennefer that she shouldn't he have lied. Yennefer felt very depressed. She thinks that learning sorcery will change her life, but she doesn't he make any progress. Yennefer found a male classmate to confide in. This male classmate was her first love, named Estreed. He encourages Yennefer and asks her to try to utilize his heart. They look at each other with their heads closed together. The atmosphere also becomes ambiguous. Encouraged by Estri, Yennefer continues to learn sorcery. In the third class, the dean gives each student glass bottles. They come to a cave with a cavern above it. There is thunder and lightning, and it is where the spales are strongest. The lesson seems to be filled with the most danger. The dean asks the students to use the glass bottles in their hands to collect the lightning. One student volunteered to be the first to try. She raises the glass bottle. Her hands keep shaking. Suddenly an accident happened. The lightning struck the student and smoke came out of her body. But the dean doesn't tell the students to stop. But let's them keep trying. Accidents kept happening. One student collected the lightning, but the glass bottle broke. The shard scratched her eyes. Yennefer is also asked to try. She raises the bottle and looks up to the sky. In the next second, the lightning struck Yennefer and she flew away. Dean felt helpless. She no longer paid attention to Yennefer and continued to instruct the other students, failing one after another. Yennefer broke down. She screams loudly and releases the lightning in her body. But the Dean reacted quickly and she sent the lightning back into the sky. The other students didn't get hurt until the end of class. The dean tells the other students to leave first. She talked to Yennefer alone. The dean always believed that Yennefer has great power in her body, but she must learn to control her emotions and spells, or she will be consumed by them. The dean gives her a task and she needs to get close to a street again. Their relationship grows stronger, and Yennefer's emotions get under control. She tries to use the spells according to the incantations taught by a street and succeeds. She feels very happy. Yennefer confesses to a street that she has a quarter elven blood. It is the cause of her physical deformities. She did not realize that Estreed would betray herself. When Yennefer returns to her quarters, she hears a noise coming from the side. She looks through the hole to see what is going on. Yennefer saw the Dean use a sorcery. She turns the three students with the worst grades into eels. Yennefer is very shocked. She asks the Dean why she did this. The Dean explains that the best thing a flower can do is wither. Yennefer realizes that she has to become stronger or she will be eliminated. She picks up a broom and sweeps the eel into the water. The change in Yennefer pleases the Dean. From that day on, Yennefer focuses on learning sorcery. She has become an outstanding student representative. The graduation ceremony is about to hold. The students will be assigned to different countries. They are to serve the king. Before the graduation ceremony began, Yennefer met with the plastic surgeon. The plastic surgeon prepares her gown and promises to fix her defense. 
reformed body. But soon Yennefer knows that she will be assigned to the Nilfgaardian Empire. It was a very poor country, and Yennefer s wishes to return to her homeland, Edern. She is very disappointed and approaches the Dean. It wasn't the Dean's decision, but the members of the Warlock Academy Brotherhood. They know that the Edern does not like elves and that Yennefer has a quarter elven blood. This information is revealed to the Brotherhood by Astrid. He was also given a promotion as a result, but Yennefer blames it on her ugly appearance. She approached the plastic surgeon again. She says she is willing to pay any price to change her appearance. The plastic surgeon agreed to her request, because it was an implant surgery. The plastic surgeon didn't to use anesthesia. He took the scalpel and reached under Yennefer's skirt. She feels so much pain that she screams at the top of her lungs. Her uterus is removed, and the price she pays is her fertility. The plastic surgeon applies a potion to Yennefer's body, then recites an incantation. The potion slowly flows downward, and Yennefer's skin is being burned as she screams out loud in pain. Her body keeps shaking and her voice is about to shatter the house. The chains holding her hands are also broken. Yennefer's deformed bones begin to remodel, and she is reborn in the flames. When she arrives at the graduation banquet, everyone is shocked. Yennefer's face was flawless, and her body became sexy. Everyone seemed to have forgotten Yennefer's original face, and out to revel in her. King of Edern even holds her hand. Yennefer succeeded in getting the chance to go to Edern, and she would be promoted to the position of court sorceress. The two students who are assigned to Adian, on the other hand, can only go to the Nilfgaardian Empire. They are not happy about this. Time passed. Yennefer had been serving in Adian for decades. Her appearance had not changed, and her sorcery had become more and more powerful. But the political situation in Adian is chaotic, and Yennefer is tired of it. At this time she is on a mission. She needs to protect a noble mother and daughter. But an accident happens. Their caravan is attacked by assassin. Yennefer sees all the soldiers killed, and their bodies become crushed. The assassin is also a sorcerer who can manipulate the monster mantis. Yennefer doesn't fight the assassin because she wants to protect her mother and daughter. She uses a sorcery to open a portal to escape. They cross from the snow to the desert, but the assassin and the mantis keep following them. The mantis monster attacks and the last soldier is killed. They could only keep running. Forward, Yennefer uses the sorcery again to open the portal. After many crossings, they eventually arrive at the cliff. Yennefer is exhausted and she kneels on the ground very weak. Suddenly the noblewoman blames Yennefer for her dereliction of duty. She should have foreseen the danger. The noblewoman didn't realize that the assassins are sent by her husband because she has never given given birth to a son, her husband has lost patience with her. Yennefer is enraged. When the next danger comes, she uses a sorcery to leave alone. The assassin and the mantis monster step towards the noblewoman. She offers the lives of her children in exchange. The assassin is given orders to kill the noblewoman and her daughter, and he will spare no one. After the noblewoman is killed, the mantis monster continues to attack the baby. Yennefer crosses back in time. She cuts the mantis monster's head off. Yennefer doesn't want the innocent baby to get hurt, but this time, she crosses into the sea. The sea keeps lapping at their bodies. Although Yennefer tries to protect the baby, she passes away because of the seawater. The baby's face is very pale and Yennefer has no way to use sorcery to revive her. She feels helpless and agonized. She sacrificed her fertility in order to become the most powerful sorcerer. Yennefer has more love and compassion for her baby. The accident makes her want to be a mother even more. The deaths of the female nobles also send chills down her spine. The crown is ruthless and they can kill unsatisfied nobles. They may also kill sorcerer who cannot serve their country. Yennefer decides to give up her career as a courtesan sorcerer. She wants to return to ordinary life and rediscover her fertility. Yennefer lives in a small town after leaving Auden. She uses her sorcery to heal people and in exchange for a living. In fact, Yennefer has another purpose. She knows that there is a spirit called Jin. The Jin can grant three wishes to its master. Unconditionally, Yennefer hopes to find it and use it to regain her fertility. When the head know that Yennefer has given up her profession, she arrives in the small town. She persuades Yennefer to return to work at the academy. Yennefer is a powerful sorcerer with a quarter of elven blood, and her powers are enough to change the world. The Dean thinks it's a great shame that she gave up being a sorcerer, but she was turned down, and Yennefer is tired of living that way. But life in a small town isn't going well. Because of Yennefer's sizable income, the mayor of the town often harassed her, demanding that she pay high taxes. Yennefer doesn't cooperate, and she even asks the mayor to arrest her. When she arrived at the mayor's house, she quickly became the master. She controls everyone with her sorcery. They become addicted to each other's flesh. But soon, an unexpected thing happened. A man breaks into the mayor's house, and he says he's looking at The man's friend was very weak, and his body was corrupted by the sorcery. The man wants Yennefer to heal his friend with sorcery, 
The man tells Yennefer about their experience. The man's name is Gerald, and he is a witcher who specializes in killing monsters, and his friend Dandelion is a bard. They are also looking for the djinn, and have captured it. The djinn lives in a bottle, and Dandelion tries to snatch the bottle. Eventually, the bottle is snatched by Dandelion, and the lid is in the hands of Gerald. Dandelion believes that he is the owner of the djinn, and he begins to make a wish. Dandelion's voice is very loud, and Gerald is getting angry. He yelled I wish you'd be quiet and suddenly there was a big wind in the forest. Dandelion fell sick too, because Gerald is the master of the djinn. The djinn are granting him his first wish. The sorcery is about to take away Dandarian's voice, and he even spits out blood. Gerald realizes that something is wrong, and that Dandelion must be treated immediately. They ride to a nearby town for help. An elven doctor offers them a potion, but the doctor says that his sorcery is not strong enough. If they wanted to heal the damage from the sorcery, they would need to seek treatment from Yennefer. Gerald learns that Yennefer is at the mayor's house, and he brings Dandelion with him. After Yennefer learns about what Gerald experienced, she has a new plan. She wants to snatch Jin away from her. She pretends to agree to treat Dandelion and then seduces Gerald with her beauty. She offers to deliver a kiss to Gerald. Soon Gerald passes out as Yennefer uses the drug. She even controls the mayor of the town and puts Gerald in jail. Yennefer believes that Dandelion is the master of the Jin. She is going to complete the sacrifice spell to make Dandelion the new vessel that will contain the Jin. Dandelion is so scared that he doesn't to even know how to cooperate with Yennefer. She she decides to complete the spell alone, which allows Dandelion to find and escape. Meanwhile inside the prison, Gerald is being beaten. He can't take it anymore. He yells and lets the cursed jailer die. The next second the jailer's head is gone. Gerald knows it is the djinn who helped him to get his second wish. Gerald is the master of the djinn. He has no time to repent. He needs to go and save Dandelion. Very coincidentally, Gerald and Dandelion meet on the road. Dandelion recounts what happened to him. Gerald knows that Yennefer is in danger and that the magic will consume her. Gerald decides to stop her madness. He sees that powerful sorcery is consuming Yennefer. A power he cannot defeat. The only one who can defeat the djinn is the djinns themselves. Gerald can only utter a third wish, and his life becomes linked to Yennefer, because the djinn could not kill its master. When Gerald's life was linked to Yennefer, Yennefer was saved. Soon the sorcery dissipated. The house also began to collapse. Luckily, neither Gerald nor Yennefer are hurt. After the calamity, they develop feelings. Although they hadn't known each other for a long time, but powerful people always attract each other. They become more and more familiar, and Yennefer learns about Jellet's story. His story was as exciting as Yennefer's life experience.